Hello everybody and welcome back. Thank you very much for joining me. My name is Deborah Hatswell and you're listening to BBR Investigations. I have a little treat for you tonight. As I've been off for several weeks recently, I've been arranging lectures and talks and I've had a really busy schedule of TV research. So it's taken me some time to catch up on all of the new reports that have come in from listeners to the show. I'd like to share a number of those experiences from the UK with unknown creatures. And a report of a dogman seen in South Carolina in the US with you that have not been published previously. Recently, I released an interview with myself and a young man called Ethan. Ethan saw a strange canine creature that vanished in front of him when he was out on the farm lanes out in rural cultures in Cheshire. Both Ethan and his mother saw the strange animal they described as something definitely dog-like, but not easy to describe. They said, Whatever this thing was, it was on all fours in the middle of the road. It looked really odd. It was about the size of a dog. It had white fur or hair, but it moved in a very strange way, and it seemed like you could see through it almost. It was kind of transparent and it just looked at us and moved off into the woods at the other side of the road and just vanished. The way it walked was strange. I can only describe it as the exorcist type walk from the film, as it was moving in a jerky, unnatural way. I have no idea what we saw that day and I'd be really interested to know if anyone could shed any light on the creature. Has anyone else reported something like this? Luckily today, I was able to share this report with him, as it came in quite recently. And that was a transparent creature the witness described as the size of a Great Dane. Um, He's one of the listeners to the podcast and he said, I'd like to make a report on behalf of my nephew. He was driving home from my house near Manchester Airport late one night. He was travelling down Roaring Gate Lane. As he went around a bend near the Davenport Green Wedding Venue, he was met by the alarming sight of a creature he's still struggling to name. He described it in the way as a giant rabbit. This thing was the size of a Great Dane and it was moving across the road from one side to the other. My nephew was forced to ram his brakes on, but it was too late and he braced for the impact as he was clearly about to hit this thing. He waited for the thud to happen, but there was none. And he swears you should have hit it. He drove off home shaken. And as he looked back in the mirror, he thought about it. He realised the creature appeared to have been transparent. I've been speaking to him recently. And he took me through it and explained a few details that I didn't know made things clearer. He said the thing was as high as his eye line and as wide, maybe a bit smaller than the width of his car. I also asked him why he said it resembled a rabbit and he told me it was shaped like a rabbit in that it had a big ass end like a rabbit, a thick muscular back, not that it had big ears or anything like that. He didn't know what it was. He said he didn't clock its face because it all happened so quick because he whipped around the bend it was crossing the road in front of him. These new details almost resemble The Tatton story of the guy sat in his jeep, he said, Taz isn't that far from where he experienced it, Deb. Now, the Tatton story is an incident that happened in 2015, when a man on the Tatton Manor private estate saw a creature cross in front of his car that he struggled to describe. His dog was the first to pick up on the weird human-like shape thing as it skulked close to the car. He described it, and the way it moved in enough detail to make me understand why he was so shaken up by the event. And he explained to me the difficulty he was also having naming what he saw that day. His van had broken down, he couldn't drive off. He had to wait for the emergency services to come out and help him fix the van. He said, I've no clue what it was that crossed the road. It was right at the edge of the truck's lights. I could only just see it crawl like it was on its belly and it crossed the road and went from one side of the other into the woods. You could see it It was fur covered and a light brown or just kind of brown in colour. But as it was dark and I could only just see it, I can't really say what it was. 
I tried to rationalise it in my mind. I'm thinking, what the hell am I looking at? For another hour, I had to sit there and wrap my brains trying to place this creature. It crawled like a soldier on its belly. What can do that? I can't remember seeing a tail on it. It was really big, at least as big as a man. It moved like a skulking cat, but the size was far too large for it to be a cat, and its belly must have been touching the ground as it moved. My lights at this point were getting dim. The battery was drained, so it was not clear what I was looking at. It was very fast, it wasn't slow like a person, but it definitely had arms and legs. So that's why I'm saying it crawled like a man. Now, the description of this creature moving from one side of the path to another is something that crops up often in the UK cryptid reports. There are many similarities in this case and the ones that you'll hear tonight, and they run through so many of the others too. For example, the way the creature kept itself just outside of the car headlights, it stayed close to the ground in a position most humans would find impossible. I have even heard it described by witnesses as moving like Fred Flintstone did on his fingers. Another thing to note, this is a private estate, complete with manor house and extensive land. There are fish, stock lakes, pheasants, partridge, rabbits, hare, deer, roaming freely. It's not accessible to the public for large parts of the year. It's an area with a high number of British Bigfoot, UK Wildman and Dogman reports that stretch in all directions. Other reports in the area include Sue Langham, who reported seeing a creature around the size of a small dog with a fox-like head and an over-muscular body. She said the animal was making the sound of a strangled wolf. Earlier in the month, the creature, or something similar to it, was spotted moving along Belmont Road. In the summer solstice 2020, a lady named Fiona, who listens to the show, got in touch with me and she said, we saw a dogman creature on midsummer solstice back in 2020. It was a very warm evening. We'd taken our dogs, which are new foundlings, out across the Mersey Bank playing fields. We went down the footpath alongside the parkway, and rounded the bend towards Kenworthy Woods. As we walked down the footpath heading towards Withenshaw Sports Ground entrance, we noticed there were a few cars parked up near the yellow gates. And at the end of the path we were on, there were more yellow gates. We were about 25 yards of the parking area and something extremely tall, around eight feet plus, suddenly sprinted past the cars heading towards the underpass. My dogs, being exceptionally calm usually, didn't react. But my son and I just gawped at each other in confused shock. Almost simultaneously, we both said, Did you see that? Neither of us could answer. We felt no sense of threat from it. In fact, I got the distinct impression that this astonishing creature was doing its best to get away as fast as possible. That evening, there were plans to have some sort of rave with a sound system up there, and I think that maybe that had disturbed it. I'm vaguely aware of similar sightings around Salford and, of course, a footprint spotted in the orchards that made the papers a few years ago. I go regular to Kenworthy Woods often. It's one of my favourite places and I've had the sense of being watched when no one's around when I'm there. And there have been a couple of moments with my son where we could have sworn a creature was there in the thickets watching us. I feel quite chuffed to have seen them, as it was genuinely an amazing experience that I now realise is a bit more common than I thought. You know, who knows? Maybe I'll see him again one day. I felt no sense of evil or malign intent from him. In fact, I picked up more of a sense of curiosity and a desire to escape. The whole experience is completely unforgettable. I wonder if the solstice was the reason the wolfman was out and about. It's a magical time of year, and also the time when protein, carbs from fruits are at the most abundant. As I say this, I realise for the first time that my own experience happened in the summer equinox back in 1982. Something I hadn't thought of before, 
when I shall look at it going forward, as it may mean something. During the Equinox period this year, I was contacted by one of my BBR investigators, Kevin Scariot, who lives in the Thetford Forest area, an area that's well known in cryptid circles due to the high number of creature reports that are clustered in the forest. He contacted me whilst I was away in Wiltshire giving a talk as he'd witnessed a large black cat close to his home. He also heard a series of wood knocks coming from the forest in July 2022 that could be connected to the cases we have in the forest and are happening around this time of year. I'm a regularly in touch with Kevin, I've been for a number of years now. I find him, to be honest, a level-headed chap who's used to the noises on his land, wildlife and mechanical alike. I'd mentioned on a live chat on YouTube that a number of new reports had come in that mentioned wood knocking during the event where the person saw the creature. Kevin said, It was last weekend when we heard wood knocking. My brother pointed it out to me. There were several knocks that were coming from the forest at the bottom of our field. It sounded like two knocks and then a break before it started again. It's so overgrown out there that we couldn't locate the origin or anything that could have accounted for what we heard. The Forestry Commission hasn't cut the pass back over the last two years. It's becoming almost impossible to walk in there. It's as if they don't want people in there for some reason. We live close to the B112 where the man reported that he was followed by a creature that went off into the forest. This year, Kevin saw a large black cat close to the farm. He said, hi, Deborah, I hope you keep him well. This morning, I had a rather strange encounter. I was opening my bedroom curtains about 5.30am and I caught sight of a huge black cat-like animal leaping out of the undergrowth. It happened very quickly and it moved off into the forest at incredible speed. I didn't get a great view of it, but it seemed much larger than a regular panther-type cat would be. This was more lion-sized. The speed that it moved through the undergrowth really shook me. I knew it couldn't be a deer, as they tend to hop when they run. This thing was like a rocket. I tried to get a photo, but I couldn't see it anymore, and I was too afraid to pursue it. I didn't really fancy being its breakfast. The deer were very disturbed a couple of days ago, and I just put it down to them mating but maybe they were being hunted by this thing. Whatever it was, it certainly wasn't a deer. I wouldn't have believed it had I not seen it myself. The size of it emerging from the undergrowth took me completely by surprise. Now, other reports in the area include one that also happened at this time of year during the equinox, and it makes me wonder if there's a connection to Kevin's experiences and all of the other reports that happened in the forest. A podcast listener got in touch with me and they were explaining something to happen to them that happened in June of 2017. And he said, I live quite close to Thetford Forest. And I've over the years had a couple of strange experiences that I wouldn't mind sharing with you. The first thing that happened to me happened when we were canoeing upstream from Santon down at we drifted backstream a little, you know, to a suitable location to pull the canoe out of the water and just set up our hammocks for the night. We walked until we were far off the beaten track and decided we'd set up camp for the night in a spot we found. It was about 2am when we settled into our hammocks to get some sleep. All was quiet and then we both heard slow and deliberate movement that approached us. We both asked each other at the same time, Is that you? And we both answered, no, I thought it was you moving. We remained silent and the sound of footsteps circled us a few times before slowly walking away. Wherever it was that was walking, it would pause instantly if we made any kind of noise and then it would start up again if we were silent. In the first light, we could clearly see the trampled down grass and the route that it took coming to our camp where it was walking around us before returning to continue along the river bank. And there's no path along the river where we stayed. It's just tall grass and stinging nettles. You know, it's about four foot high at this time of year. It could sting through your jeans. It was all really strange. Someone 
had walked up to camp, walked slowly around the hammocks with enough noise that we could hear them, and then went off again, along the river. As we paddled back in the morning, we went over what we'd seen and what we'd heard, you know, trying to work it out, trying to make sense of it all. I suppose it could have been a person, but I find it strange that they'd be walking along an overgrown riverbank in the dead of night with no torch or light to guide them. How did they manage to not trip over or fall in the river or, you know, why didn't they react to being stung by the nettles? The only thing we could think of was that it was walking upright on two legs and that's based on the sound of the footsteps and the tracks in the long grass and nettles. Plus I have a good night vision and we were very aware of our surroundings. I don't think either of us wanted to say exactly what we thought it could have been in case it put us off bushcrafting in the forest. Neither of us felt scared or unsettled at any time while we were out there, you know, until that investigated our camp. The second experience happened on the morning of Sunday, 25th of June, 2017. I got up early, decided to take my dog for a good long walk along the forest. I parked my car down a forest track that has a right of way with vehicles access permitted. We set off as normal, birds are singing, it's cool, it's a lovely sunny day. You know, my dog normally walks about two or three metres in front of me off lead. She just seems to think that all creatures in the forest are potentially her friends. You know, she'll run off after things. She's also friendly to other people and dogs. She barks and yaps excitedly, you know, to engage the other dog to chase her, but she's not mean. I like to think I know her barks and the meanings of them quite well by now. The walk went well, nothing out of the ordinary. We go by a potential overnight bushcraft location and I'm thinking it's a big good place to stay and I see a woven willow or hazel screen that's been made at a spot that overlooks the railway line and the little Oost River Valley. The screen has about four rectangular apertures varying heights as if you know for binoculars to be used. It's too far off the beaten track in the trails to be for an average visitor. The grass is not trodden down near it so it's not been used too much. You know we saw I just carried on with the dog. I took a shortcut back to the car. I put the travel harness on my dog and clips her in. I start the car, slowly head down the track to exit the forest. I've got the windows down to enjoy the breeze and smile, you know, my dog's there with her head out the window. And all of a sudden, her head appears between the two front seats of the car and she's staring at something ahead. Nothing I say or do will break her stare. So I begin to scan the track and verge ahead, you know, for a person, a dog, a fox or a deer. I'm aware she's now stood up. She's leaning forward as if to get a better look out into the front of us. I can't see anything out of place at the track ahead. But I do slow down to a crawl just in case something runs out in front of us. All of a sudden, she starts barking at full volume. This is not her greeting bark. It is so much deeper and powerful than I've ever heard before. And in between each bark, she growls and her top lips curl back, showing her teeth. And in the five years I've owned her, she's never, ever displayed this behaviour. I stop the car and try to reassure her that everything's okay. She does all she can, you know, to keep looking ahead. She's snarling and growling and she's got this deep, powerful barking going on. I like to think I know my dog well but this unsettled me. I decided to carry on driving in the hope of passing whatever it was that was causing her to be so agitated. And by now she's pulling against her harness. I've never heard the sound she's making before. I've also never seen her so upset, agitated and focused on what she has clearly decided is a threat. I keep scanning the track up ahead, looking on the verges, but I see nothing out of the ordinary. As I'm driving, I try and keep my eye on her and she turns and faces whatever it is, you know, when we pass it. And I'm also trying to keep an eye on the track ahead. And for a moment, I considered turning the car around and leaving the forest the long way. Just go out that way and avoid whatever is causing her to be this upset. And then up ahead, coming out of the verge of tall grasses and bracken and nettle, is something moving from the left to the right. Its movements look fluid and deliberate, but I don't know what it is. My first thought was, it's a vehicle of some type. 
But the idea is quickly dismissed as how would it fit through the trees and who would be in it, driving it. Before I get a better look, it's crossed the track and I couldn't see it anymore. I didn't get a chance to have a good look. I saw a tiny bit of detail, but the distance and the speed it crossed that track made it impossible. It was a grey brown in colour. It had no sharp or defined outline, such as a vehicle. My mind's trying to match the image with what it could be. My dog's still growling, snarling and barking in the direction that it's gone. As we passed the spot where it crossed, I could see a parting of the bracken and grass, but not like a deer trail that's clearly defined. My dog's now fight facing that way and looking as that creature, because that's what it was, has gone. The hackles are up. She's snarling and growling. She's deep barking in a wide defensive stance. She then faces out the rear, still barking, until we get to the main road and head home. I still have no idea what crossed that path and upset the dog so much, but she's never acted that way before. I was meant to be spending a night while camping in the forest close to the sighting area, but I've decided to give it a miss for the time being. I'm tempted to return to the area and have a good look, maybe take some photos or videos so I can track any changes. I'm too worried to go. If I do, I'll bring the dog on the lead. This report reminded me very much of a very recent report that came in from one of the listeners to the show named Scott Lander, who's a YouTuber, who experienced a really strange creature he couldn't identify in an Ayrshire woodland. It is very similar to the reports featured already and with the ones that are coming up. It has many of the same identifiers and they are here in Scott's experience. This happened in the summer of 2016 and he said, I was heading back to my town in Ayrshire in the evening after spending the day out in the local countryside. I was about to climb over a barbed wire fence, moving from one field to another, when I heard a noise that to me at first was nothing more than a car engine in the distance. But within seconds, the sound was clearly very close to me, grabbing my attention. Before the sound ended, you could tell it was a distinct growl as if making an emphasis to warn me of something. I froze on the spot immediately, recognising that I'd just been growled at, a growl that was clearly not belonging to any animal in the British countryside. I didn't move for at least 15 minutes, but I didn't see anything. It was still light in the evening. To the right of me were open fields, but to my left, was just yards away, was a stretch of thick bush like saplings. I assumed that was where the creature that had growled at me was hiding. I did scan the area of overgrowth, but I didn't see anything, nor did I hear anything after that. If not for the emphasised growl at the end, I wouldn't have known I'd been growled at. But instead, to experience a really weird, close sound like that is hard to explain. I rationalised that it was perhaps a deer that growled at me, given the sound was very deep and deer are sometimes seen in my local countryside. I was that stuck for an explanation, being completely perplexed and honestly a bit crappy myself, wondering if I'd make it home alive that night. But it made me feel a bit more safe to think of it being a deer, so I made off for home and was looking over my shoulder every few seconds. It was about a year after this experience when I thought the deer theory didn't make much sense. Deer don't grow. And in my experience of encountering them, they run miles if they meet people. I told some of my family members about my experience and the common response of, oh, it was a big cat. You know, local farmers have supposedly been aware of them in the area. It's what I've come to believe I encountered. Certainly, there's no known animal in the British countryside that could have possibly growled at me in a similar fashion. The growl lasted seven or eight seconds. It was a deep growl ending on an emphasised snarl. But it was an out of the ordinary experience, that's for sure. In the same week that I received Scott's experience, a report came in from another man who was out in the UK countryside while camping, and he too was growled at by something that was shadowing him in around the area, very similar manner to the cases we've heard here tonight. I've included a link to his YouTube channel, Bushcraft Sussex. I think you'd really enjoy his 
content. Chris shared a video explaining several experiences that have happened to him when he's been out wild camping in the UK. As you know, many of my witnesses have the same hobbies and likes as Chris, and they too have had experiences in our woodlands and forests. Chris has access to private land on the South Downs, and for that reason, the area is not being shared. Chris has a number of social media sites like YouTube and TikTok, and I think many of you will enjoy his content, so I've added his link down below. This is what he had to say. Hello, my name's Chris. Um, basically, I run social media sites. I do uh, a lot of reaction videos to some survival, silly survival videos, basically, and I do um, bushcraft stuff as well, but that's more on my YouTube. Um, I do TikTok. I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Um, but, but I do spend a lot of time out in the woods. I do wild camping and I also have a permission that my friend owns. It's an ancient woodland on the South Downs National Park. And this is where, where, where this happens, um, basically. There's a few experiences I've had. Um, the first one, I sort of dismissed it because I was half asleep. But when I think back, it was it was quite um, unnerving, as to say. Uh, basically, I was asleep in my hammock, half asleep, you know, as you do listening to the owls and stuff and um it was about two in the morning something come crashing through the trees and it it wasn't a deer because deer go psh, 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 as they run you know what i mean they've got four legs they trot and um they're not too heavy you know they're not big this sounded like a rugby player come barging through the trees i mean like smash like really just it almost seemed aggressive you know very very powerful I didn't also hear it, I felt it, you know, I felt the, I don't know, it was like a fear almost, and I don't scare easily, especially in the woods, I've been up there most of my life, and, uh, coming through the trees, and it, <clears throat> and it sort of stopped a little bit fur further away, and then just carried on going. Now, I dismissed it as a deer and just sort of went back to sleep, but when I think back, it was too big to be a deer, and, and the feeling I got from it was, you know, it wasn't a deer. Normally I get excited when I see deer, you know, and I hear deer. I'm like, wow, listen to that. That's really cool, you know. This was more of a whoa. And I actually shouted out loud, whoa. You know, like, whoa. Didn't know what it was, you know. I was very, um, you know, like fight or flight. I was in fight mode. I was, like, ready to uh, jump out and uh, go and have a butcher's. It... it I, don't, I don't know what it was. It could have been anything, really. It could have been my mind playing tricks on me, but it was very very big and very loud um another experience i had we were doing some coppicing and i was walking through the woods now i think i've still got this on camera somewhere if i have i'll upload it it's um there's something in the tree there's a big old oak tree and there's a v at the top of it it's all big oak trees around there but um and it looked like someone was in a ghillie suit it's hard to explain you know like how um leaves and branches get stuck in um beech trees and they look like a big nest it looked like that but it was an oak tree so i was very very confused you know what's what's going on you know oak trees you don't normally get that and uh i sort of scanned past it with the camera and just carry on with my work like it's nothing i should have gone up to it really but i didn't because i was um i actually had covid at the time i didn't realize so i was i was pretty ill but um i should have uh, gone up and uh, gone up and had a look um if i can find the video i'll upload it uh, another time we were camping up there with the kids and something was smacking on a tree. Now, I'll dismiss that because, like, yeah, you know, it could have been someone messing around or whatever, but you never know. You know, something big hitting a tree. Bam, 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 bam. And then it stopped. And I was just like, no, no don't scare the kids. Um, the latest one, me and my friend, were, we, we were camping out. And uh, I wasn't alive. I was doing a live and I had quite a few people watching me. And we're chatting away and all that, and suddenly we're just <laughs> coming through the bush. Um, so I was like, what's that? And my mate said, it might be a fox. I said, no, fox, fox flank you. Fox will go round you to see what's going on. He'll watch you, but he'll keep his distance. Um, it wasn't a deer because I shouted, hello, and nothing, you know, the deer didn't run. Deer would run. As soon as they hear you, bush, they're gone. Um, we're standing there, you know, just chatting away, like, I oh, would just ignore it, and blah, blah, blah. And my mate's dog, Ruby, um, she's very inquisitive, and she sat between my mate's legs, and she looked genuinely scared. She wasn't very happy about the situation. Um, 
she was sitting there and uh, you know as dogs do when they're afraid now we had the movement again it was really really close and then all of a sudden the clap it's like clap clap very very loud um i'll show people the video they go it's a twig snapping and all that it's not a twig snapping it is flesh on flesh you know you can you can hear it it sounds it's, it's so loud and so resounding You'd have to have some big old hands to clap like that, you know, unless you're slapping someone on the back or something. It's, 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 it's hard to explain. Um, got this really, really eerie feeling, but we decided to stay. So um, my mate's got a shepherd's hut there, so we decided to sleep in the shepherd's hut. Um, I'm in the shepherd's hut. Gets to about four in the morning. I wake up to the dog sitting there, staring at the door, shaking almost. And she... Um, she wasn't, you know, she wasn't very, very comfortable with the situation. And then I heard the clap again, and the clap again. And it was moving around the camp. And it was frequent, very, very frequent. So I sat up and listened to it. I had my axe in my hand just in case, because, you know, not that it's going to do much help. But, you know, I'm not going to go down without a fight. Um, it was just incredibly strange. Something was there. Something was watching us. Something was clapping. Ever since then, I've had dr weird dreams that, you know, there's this big blurry creature who moves, um, I don't know, it's hard to explain, and it's, it's everywhere I go, it's there, you know, it's, it's stalking me, it's following me around, which is, which is weird, I don't know, I can't explain that, but um, I'll put the video on after this, and uh, you can see for yourself and decide for yourself what you think it is, but it was definitely a clap. Um, I've also got a picture as well of a man walking across the ridge of a hill and when you look at it it's about half the size of the trees it's massive um i'll see if i can find that picture i'll, I'll put it up but here we go here's the video of the uh, clap clap what's that moving hello I've heard so many experiences from people just like Chris who are out and about in the UK while camping or doing survival or foraging or, you know, out with a dog. I've had people go out into areas where they want to camp and they have a hand that's shoved underneath their tent or they're attacked by a creature they cannot see. Listening to these tales, you start to see the patterns that roll within them and there are a number of them as you listen to each of the person's experiences tonight. The creature moving around camp, keeping itself out of the light, you know, seven or eight feet tall, very thick and muscled. The clapping sounds mentioned by Chris are often reported here in the UK and in the US. I believe it's a technique used for communication as several of the world's indigenous tribes use that method to find each other in the jungle or when they're out hunting. They clap loudly in front of an open mouth and the sound's amplified. It carries for a much longer distance. You don't need to carry a stick around you then. Wood knocking, you know. Some monkeys and apes also use that technique. I've taken reports from other people who were camping when they've experienced it themselves. It's like a <coughs> kind of sound, you know. Just like the sound Chris captured on his video. In our last case tonight our witnesses from south carolina and he's worked on the raf ministry of defense land here in the uk um and he had an experience where he said my granddad shot at it and he was as white as a sheep a witness is called jr and he said i really love your podcast deb and i'm a regular listener i was based in the uk for seven years in the united states air force and i've had some pretty strange encounters whilst i was serving over there I've seen ghosts, UFOs, and some things that I can't really explain. I really enjoyed the time I spent in England. I was stationed at RAF Upper Hayford and at RAF Bentwaters. RAF Hayford was in Oxfordshire, near Bychester. I had what I believe was an out-of-body experience there. I don't understand why I've had so many crazy things happen in my life. Maybe I'm just lucky, I guess. I really need to write down all of the things I've experienced on my 66 years here on this earth. But where do you start? It's kind of difficult to talk about it to people in general, as they just think you're nuts. It's so hard to share with people who have never had an experience themselves. 
I told a few co-workers about what I think was a dogman encounter that happened when I was a teenager, and they think I'm nuts. So I just stopped sharing with people in general. But listening to you as you share other people's stories, I feel I can open up about the dogman experience that I had. The earliest experience I can remember happened on our tobacco farm in South Carolina. It was late one night, probably about 1970-ish. My granddad and I heard a lot of squealing coming from our pig pen and we went out to see what it was. We heard a loud growling sound as we got near to where we kept the pigs and then we heard a scream like I've never heard before or since. It was dark that night so I couldn't really tell what was out there. But my granddad ordered me to go back to the house and as I did, he shot at whatever it was to scare it away. That didn't work. It only made it even more angry and it chased my granddad back into the house. I've never seen him scared of anything before, but I could tell that he was really spooked as he was as white as a sheet. The next morning, we went to check on the pigs and found two of them with their heads missing. Nothing else was taken and there was very little blood around them. We found some strange tracks by the canal and I have no idea about what animal left them and I know animal prints. That's a brief telling of that incident, but I have many others. I had a voice calling me from the wilds out there. My great-grandmother was Native American, and she told us never to follow the owl when it called out in the night, but to come and find her instead. I also had an out-of-body experience involving my granddad after he passed. I really wish I could understand the events that have taken place in my life. JR. I actually spoke to a guy in Scotland who had an out-of-body experience when he was camping with a friend in the Pentland Hills and he saw a creature as he looked down on himself in the camp that walked between his tent and his friends. His friend was absolutely hysterical. I've taken reports from men who have never camped again, people who've got out of the tent for a pee and been approached by creatures that they cannot describe. JR's case in South Carolina reminds me of Jeremiah. I took his report probably three or four years ago now. He lived in South Carolina and he was out with his stepson and they were walking along a trail, train trellis. And up ahead of them was a very tall sign. And out from the woods walked a seven foot tall, hairy creature that was as high as the sign. A few days later, they found prints in the mud. And not too long after that, along the railway trellis, in a place it was impossible to get to, there was an alligator that had a bite taken out of it, what was covered with a piece of bark. And Jerry Maria shared those um, pictures with me. They were absolutely extraordinary. It doesn't seem to matter where you are in the world, you know, whether you're camping in Canada or BC or Alaska, the United States, the UK or Europe. People all across the world have experiences like this. I don't know of any animal that comes into your camp on two legs, walks around your tent and then makes its way off again. The only animal that has two legs in the UK is a human. But that's not what these campers are picking up on. I am quite sure that all of them are erudite. They all hold down jobs and see to their children and do what they have to do every day. If they thought that was an ordinary person, it wouldn't even be worth reporting it to them. They would just think, mm, some weirdos around my camp. There's something different, something that unnerves them, something that their brain and intuition is picking up on. And Kate, who had the dogman experience in Oxfordshire, was camping in a hammock in the woods in Kilda. When she heard something walk around her tent that smelled like fox pee. Kilda Forest, in most of the north east of England, has numerous Bigfoot, wild man and dogman reports. In fact, there's a report from a young boy there who was saved from going over a cliff by what he described as a troglodyte. The stories like this carry on. And I'll bring more of them to you as we go forward. As I say, I've been off recently writing some lectures. So emails have kind of built up a little bit and I'm trying to work my way through them as we go ahead. 
I've had reports from people who have had alien craft approach them on the beach. I've had people who have been chased to their homes by dogman-like creatures that have hunted around that home for months on end. The stories that I've got in email are absolutely astounding. And the difference being is people are not scared to report here in the UK. These guys are not the only wildlife lovers out there who are hearing things in their camps. Videos go up weekly now on YouTube and TikTok of people who are out there that are experiencing the strange and the unusual, you know. And I think it will carry on. It will become more of a trend as it gets easier and easier to report. People want to understand what happened to them that day. You know, as human beings have a real need um, of answers. We have a curiosity and we want to know what happened to us that day. And I think the lads are entitled to that. Each and every one of them is they should be asking what happened to us that day. You shouldn't be keeping it a secret. Why should they? They didn't ask for it to happen. No one invited it to happen. They went out doing their own thing. And it happened, two worlds collided at that point. And I think it's incredibly refreshing that people are sitting down and explaining their experiences on camera themselves. That is just such a massive leap from where it was for me in 1982. And let's have more of it. Let's champion that. We should be funding it, shouldn't we? So I hope you've enjoyed tonight's chat. And I will be back with more cases from the VBR case files at the same time. Same day, next week. Good night, everyone.